Tabletop gaming is on the rise. It is hot and it's only getting hotter. But what is tabletop gaming? And what are the best games? And where can you take the thrill in person to play other people and maybe have a drink? Welcome to Grand Rapids and Beyond. I'm Rick. And in today's episode, we're gonna find out what the most popular types of games are. Then we'll stop by a lounge where you can actually play games with others and enjoy a drink and some snacks. We begin on Fulton Street in Grand Rapids at Blue Bridge Games. Okay, so we're here with Margaret and Ken Kleist of Blue Bridge Games, and they're gonna help us find some really cool, interesting games, some of the most popular, and kind of break down tabletop gaming. What is tabletop gaming? Uh, so frankly, it's anything that is played on a tabletop without electricity, or, or frankly, uh, in an analog format. So board games, card games, role-playing games, shared storytelling, jigsaw puzzles, I suppose you could toss in there too. But it's the um, type of entertainment uh, that's been around long before computers and video games. Uh, so that is tabletop gaming. If, if you're new to tabletop gaming, uh, there's a direction I would point you to over here in the shop that houses um, Tons of popular selections, easily accessible, rules are straightforward. You can kind of get it to the table and start playing right away. Uh, when you're in the shop, you may notice this logo on a bunch of board games, uh, and that's related to the awards that are given out each fall in Germany. There's a big panel of everybody, all kinds of nerds with opinions, and they give out awards for the best board game each year. So King Domino won in 2017, Azul won in 2018, Ticket to Ride, Settlers of Catan, those are household names by now for most folks as far as board games go. Those are also recipients of the same Game of the Year award. So I point that out to a lot of folks new to tabletop gaming because it's kind of a tried and true way of finding one that's a winner and known for being good. So King Domino is one that I point a lot of people to um, with children or not. It scans younger than the play is just because I think of the primary colors. Ultimately, you're building a kingdom five by five. So the strategies and how you match colors uh, to basically get the most crowns in your matching terrain to score the points. Um, so this is one that I point a lot of like uh, new gamers to because the rule book is just a thin, thin pamphlet. So that would be one to keep on a short list if you're looking to get into board games. Um, kind of the modern day trilogy that I touched on before, um, Ticket to Ride, Catan, and then the other one is called Carcassonne. These three titles are considered like the trinity for board games as far as modern board games. They're all recipients for that Game of the Year award. And they all rely on, um, the, the, they call it like European strategy, which means no dice rolling or minimal dice rolling, minimal luck involved. Um, most of the strategy is up to you and the decisions you make in the game. Um, so I would definitely point new gamers towards those three also. A lot of people aren't um, meeting with their usual group of players because of the, the pandemic. So two player games have really been uh, popular over the last year as well for that. So what's some really good two player um, games? Yeah, so one of my favorites, uh, and it happens to also be a card game, uh, it's called Fox in the Forest. Um, so the idea here is uh, it's a card game where there are three suits, not four, and you are still taking tricks, uh, but it has a fairy tale theme. Patchwork is another great option for two players. It's a quilting game. Uh, your board is an empty quilt template, and the game strategy is in drafting these polyomino pieces that look sort of like Tetris pieces. The strategy is in how you pick them, when you pick them, and where you add them onto the board. So it's a very puzzly type of game. Um, Seven Wonders Duel is also super popular. I'm sure most people see that on two-player lists quite often. Um, it's based on the big board game called Seven Wonders that involves passing your hand of cards around the table. But if there's only two of us, that doesn't work real well. So they came up with this dual version because the original board game is so great. One that I've been playing a lot remotely uh, because it only requires one person to own the game. Uh, this one is called Just One. You'll notice that symbol again, so Game of the Year winner from 2019. This game feels a little bit like Scategories and Codenames had a baby. So this is Codenames. It's been out for quite a few years now. 
Um, the whole idea is you work in teams to successfully guess all the words on the grid. So the nice thing with it working over Zoom is you only need, again, one person to own the game. You don't have to have multiple copies at each household. And basically, you put a camera over all of the word cards so all players can see them. And there's a clue giver on the blue team and the red team. And they're trying to get their teammates to guess the right words. And then there's story-driven games too, like narrative games, choose your own adventure. And these work just fine over Zoom as well because it's um, story-based. Outside of D&D, uh, you have systems like Tales from the Loop. The Witcher has an RPG related to it. So does Alien. If you're into HP Lovecraft, they have a whole RPG system where you play as the investigators from Arkham and you're trying to riddle out all of the weird monsters and puzzles that, that uh, happen in that world. And then there's uh, the Dungeon Crawl Classic series that's like throwback RPG, very swords and sorceries kind of um, ret retro RPGs. And that um, is pretty popular too. So one of them that's very popular for family game nights with kiddos is Cards Against Humanity Family Edition. Kids want to do what the adults are doing. They want to play what the teens are playing. So the idea of having a Cards Against Humanity catered for them with jokes of their level, um, things that are humorous to kids. Wolfie is a great cooperative game based on the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. And the idea basically is for the players to cooperate in building the brick house before the wolf catches them and throws them in the stew pot. My first castle panic. No reading required. It's all shapes and colors. And uh, you're defending the castle from all of the baddies in the forest, the goblins and the dragons. There's a lot of great kids games out there. Yeah, looking at it, I can see a lot of cool stuff here. <laughs> Now that you know what games to check out, let's head down to Ionia Avenue across from Downtown Market to a place where you can eat, drink, and play games. A place called the House Rules Lounge. I've always loved board games. Uh, before this, I ran the beer store that was in this location for about three and a half years. We were kind of a de facto board game bar anyway. We got rid of our retail shelves for, for beer, replaced it with board games, and it's been a hit since. My philosophy is good times. Uh, we bring together beer and board games in a way that no one else is really doing in West Michigan. Drink-wise, we have 20 draft lines that are filled with uh, craft selections of cider, mead, beer. We also have a 12-door cooler that's fully stocked with lots of non-alcoholic and alcoholic beverages. And we also have a full liquor selection, so we can it's a, it's a full bar. We can make you anything you need. There's, there's something for every age group, every demographic, every expert to novice level of gamer. We, we, we have something for everyone. When I asked Brian what he wants people to leave with, this is what he said. Um, a smile on their face. You came in, you played a game, you hung out with some friends, uh, you had some drinks, and you had something to do while you were here, uh, but, but you had fun. Wait, wait a second. What about the glorious food? Starting with uh, field and fire pretzels made fresh right across the street and our house beer cheese. Uh, if you want something more substantial, feel free to bring in your own food, order delivery, and uh, we might do food um, six months to a year out. So BYO. For sure. BYO. P for pizza. <laughs> So this is Cotton Candy Haze. Cotton Candy Haze. All right, Cotton Candy Haze, a little sample that I, Brian says I gotta check out. And it's from uh, New England, or Big Lake Brewing. New England IPA. That's some good stuff right there. Yeah, I really dig it. Glad you like it. Yes, indeed. Very good. Quite tasty. Um, I little little secret. I actually like selling board games more than uh, beer. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs>
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and give us a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you get notified every time we put out a neat new video about Grand Rapids and beyond. Also, click the next video.